This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brenda Braxton. You know the big question on Capitol Hill today, what to do about unemployment benefits? Three days after the federal bonus payment expired, there's still no answer. NBC's Tracy Potts is tracking negotiations. Still no deal. We still have a long ways to go. No compromise between Democrats, Republicans, and the White House on the $600 a week unemployment payments that expired Friday. Talk to President Trump. He's the one who is standing in the way of that. There's growing pressure on all sides to act. The White House recognizes that we must do something meaningful, and that's why uh, I think we can be cautiously optimistic that we'll arrive at an agreement sometime soon. The White House offered a one-week extension while negotiations continue. Let's do a short-term deal. The two issues on evictions, and unenhanced unemployment. Democrats rejected that. They have a $200 proposal, which does not meet the needs of America's working families. I'm not optimistic that there will be a solution in the very near term. Meantime, the coronavirus that caused the economic meltdown continues to spread. What we're seeing today is different from March and April. It is extraordinarily widespread. The solution, health experts say, more masks. We have to have like 85 or 90 percent of individuals wearing a mask and avoiding crowds. But that's not happening. So the virus and the money problems for millions of Americans continue to grow. So as of this morning, unemployment benefits, the federal governments have expired. Eviction protection has expired and small business loans. The Paycheck Protection Program, that runs out this month if Congress doesn't renew it. Tracy Potts, NBC News. There is some good news when it comes to unemployment in Oregon. A new program called Benefits While You Wait is now up and running. The Employment Department says it's a workaround that pays people as they wait for the state to review their claim. The department is emailing and qualifying people who or uh, calling people who qualify. You can also visit the Employment Department's website to see if you're eligible. Around the world, cities that seemingly had the coronavirus under control are going back into lockdown. In Melbourne, rising infection rates have led to an 8 p.m. curfew. And across Europe, this is high season for tourism, but restrictions are tightening there, too. The U.S., Brazil, and Mexico report the highest number of COVID deaths in the world. The U.S. now has more than 4.6 million coronavirus infections, and it's approaching 155,000 deaths. The White House Coronavirus Task Force says COVID is more widespread today than it was back in March and April. It's not just affecting urban areas either. Officials say no matter where you live, you're at risk of getting the virus. Meanwhile, Governor Kate Brown announced a special session of the legislature. It'll start August 10th. Because of the pandemic, the state needs to rebalance its budget. Oregon faces a $1 billion shortfall. Well, today, Portland Community College launched a new program to train the next group of contact tracers. They're key when it comes to fighting COVID-19. KGW's Bryant Clerkley takes a look at the program. The dean at Portland Community College says there's 40 people signed up for the course and contact tracers are going to be talking to people from different cultures and different walks of life. So that's why cultural sensitivity is one of the main topics in the lesson. Dean of Portland Community College Karen Sanders says contact tracers are crucial if we want to stop the spread of COVID-19. Contact tracers call infected people and ask them questions about their lives over the last few weeks. Details like where they've been and with who. The contact tracers then call those people to warn them and ask them to quarantine. Sanders says right now there are two full classes. The training is uh, six modules. It's fully online and uh, the, the participants have two weeks to complete those six modules. Sanders says the Oregon Health Authority gave the college a Zoom training developed for contact tracers. The college also received guidelines from the CDC. Part of the program involves developing scripts contact tracers will use when they call people. 
A lot of the curriculum is around explicit and implicit bias and making sure that when you talk with people, you're providing them with the information and you're not you're not judging or making recommendations sort of from your perspective. David Cuevas is a contact tracer for the Multnomah County Health Department. He says you have to adjust the information to fit the individual. A lot of people come from different cultures, different languages, uh, so different ages, you know, uh, Make, make sure you know what the information that we give to somebody that is in the 70s is, is different than somebody is in their 20s, you know, trying to, like I said, adjust this recipe. Cueva says sometimes it's hard to ask someone to stay home in quarantine. For them, because, you know, some people have a lot of uh, big families, you know, uh, they have to work, you know, so, you know, it's, 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 it's challenging to, to, to ask somebody to stay home. Yeah. PCC's classes are open to the public. The dean encourages anyone bilingual to consider taking the class. It's not all of the people that you connect with um, who've been exposed to COVID-19 are fluent English speakers. Bryant Clerkley, KGW News. Once students finish training, PCC will point them in the direction of a job. Right now, there is a waiting list to get into that next round of classes. Two Oregon Marines are among those presumed dead following a training accident off the coast of California. They've been identified as 19-year-old Lance Corporal Chase Sweetwood from Portland and 21-year-old Private First Class Jack Ryan Ostrovsky from Bend. Rescue crews searched for 40 hours after an accident on Thursday. 16 people were aboard an amphibious assault vehicle for a routine exercise when it reportedly took on water. Some of those people made it out, but eight went missing. All of them were from Camp Pendleton. It doesn't matter what age you are. You just like, you have to stand up for what's important. Young people leading the charge for the Black Lives Matter movement. Yesterday, hundreds of children and families marched to the courthouse in downtown Portland, demanding racial equality and an end to police violence. That was just one of several rallies we saw over the weekend. And while the message was the same, the way Portland police approached those demonstrations was different. Crowds have been out at the Justice Center, but for the most part, no officers were visible. They say they aren't engaging with protesters, and from what we've seen, the demonstrations have ended peacefully each night. This comes after federal agents pulled back following weeks of violent clashes with protesters. Now the people protesting say they want to get back to the main issue. I am a black life, so I will not be silenced. I will not quit. I will not stop. And I'm going to be out here over and over and over and over again because the more I come out here and the more I advocate, my son, my grandson is two and my granddaughter is three. And if I am effective, if all of these people are effective, then they won't ever have to do this again. We've covered many protests over the last few months, and you can catch up on all of our coverage from the very beginning. We have a playlist dedicated to the protests on our KGW YouTube channel. Well, the steel bridge is closed for a month to all traffic as TriMet works on a big improvement project. All lines in the MAX system will be affected. So if your MAX ride takes you directly over the steel bridge, plan for an extra 35 to 45 minutes. We really appreciate people's patience during this time. This project is going to be a complete overhaul and rebuild of the MAC system going across the steel bridge. So once it's completed, it'll improve reliability and efficiency. TriMet will use the Broadway and the Burnside bridges to shuttle MAX passengers across the river. Steel bridge bus lines will also be detoured. They've added decals on the ground there to help point riders in the right direction. The lower deck of the bridge will remain open to pedestrians and bicyclists. Work on the steel bridge will wrap up August 29th. A wildfire burning east of Hood River has spread to 250 acres. Crews are now working to contain it. The fire started Saturday night in a slash pile at a logging operation right off Fur Mountain Road. The Oregon Department of Forestry tells us the fire is burning on private forest land and land owned by Hood River County. Right now, no homes or buildings are in danger. 
Rod joins us now. He's also tracking weather conditions along the fire line. So what are fire crews facing today, Rod? Well, kind of good news, bad news situation. The winds are going to be picking up this afternoon. Not terribly bad. The temperatures are okay. I, I do want to give you an update. Uh, so the uh, Northwest Fire Coordination Center now reporting that fire has spread to a total of 400 acres burning. Again, this started on Saturday, uh, about nine miles outside of Hood River, grass, timber, brush. It's unclear as to... Uh, you know, the, the force that, that's fighting this fire right now, but as it's grown to 400 acres, you would assume it's going to be getting gained attention. You know, at times we've been able to see some of the, the hazy smoke from our Oregon Veterans Home camera out in the Dalles uh, where this fire is burning uh, west of, and the winds would take the smoke today toward the Dalles. It doesn't look that hazy out there right now. 83 degrees, by the way, out that direction. I mentioned uh, overall the fire weather isn't horrible. Right now it's 77 in nearby Hood River. You folks could be up into the mid-80s today, but that's, you know, kind of normal, not overly hot. And Futurecast keeps winds. This is at noon today. Skamania, 8-mile-per-hour winds. The Dalles, 15 to 20-mile-per-hour winds. They don't really increase them more than 20 throughout the afternoon. So let's hope for the best. But again, Brenda, that fire now jumping from 250 acres to 400 acres. That's a concern. And we'll have our local forecast coming up shortly. All right. Thank you, Rod.